Hey everyone, James Rees with TFB TV. Today on TFB TV, we're taking a look at the brand new Springfield. Am I allowed to say this on YouTube? It, it just seems like blasphemy. Today we're going to be looking at the brand new Springfield Heck Cat. In particular, we're going to be looking at whether or not this gun is a gimmick cash grab by Springfield using tactical modifications to an already existing and already popular design in order to make more sales, or if it's a legitimate and useful variation of an already successful concealed handgun model. That model is, of course, the Springfield Armory Hellcat. For the sake of full disclosure, while I think Springfield makes fantastic rifles, and I think their pistols are good. I've never been personally invested in their handgun line. That's not to say that they're bad or that they're good. I just have a bias, perhaps an irrational one, towards firearms that have seen widespread military or law enforcement adoption. Springfield's not been as successful as many of its competitors and peers in this respect. But as far as I know, as far as we know, they've been quite successful in the civilian handgun market. And they're generally regarded as making dependable handguns. The Hellcat's what I've previously defined as a 9mm micro compact. That is a 9mm handgun, less than 1 inch thick, less than 4.5 inches tall, with a capacity of 10 rounds or more. More to the point, the Hellcat holds 11 rounds in the magazine, plus one in the chamber. So of the other micro compacts existing at this time, that's the Ruger Max 9, the Smith & Wesson, Shield Plus and the SIG P365, not only does it hold one more round than all its competitors, but it's in fact the lightest of all four of these pistols. To compare the specs, they're all roughly the same size, as you can see here. Notice, however, in this clip that the Hellcat looks a little bit taller because it's got a red dot on it. As far as weight, the standard Hellcat, not this one, weighs 18.2 ounces. The Ruger Max 9 weighs 18.3. The Sig P365 weighs 18.6. And the Smith & Wesson Shield Plus weighs 20.1 ounces. I reviewed the Hellcat when it first came out in 2019, and I found it to be a very shootable, very carryable pistol. I mean, this is an excellent group by any measure at 10 yards, especially for a subcompact handgun. But I also got used to the trigger a little bit more between shooting those that first group and that second group. It's got a good trigger, good sights, with a front night sight as a standard option. Indeed, it's a worthy entry into this micro-compact market, as are the SIG 365, the Smith & Wesson Shield Plus, and the Ruger Max 9. It's been almost two years since the Hellcat came to market, and while it certainly doesn't need any updating, Springfield Armory is giving the Hellcat the Nicki Minaj treatment with some uh, enhancements. But are they really enhancements or is this just a consumer oriented revision to make some money? So today we're talking about the Springfield Hellcat RDP, which is Springfield's Hellcat that integrates these revisions I'm talking about. I don't know what RDP stands for. And there's no question that a 30 second search on Google would give me the result, but I'm going to make a couple guesses anyways. Radical dynamic platform. Goddamn, that's it. That is really good. That is clever. That has to be it. If it isn't Springfield, you can call it the radical dynamic platform. No charge. I won't charge you a royalty. That's such a cool name. Wait, that's not it. Okay. It's something else. It's uh... genius. My God, absolutely genius. RDP, raw dog pistol. Oh my God. How did I not know that? The guys at Springfield, God, they cracked me up. That's hilarious. So today we're talking about the Springfield Hellcat raw dog pistol specifically. This is $899, which is a $330 premium over the base model Hellcat at $569. So what are you paying for over the standard model of Hellcat? Well, I'm glad you asked. The raw dog comes cut for an optic and with an optic. In other words, Springfield has eliminated all the guesswork for you and you get a pre-zeroed optic ready to go right out of the box. The raw dogs cut for the Shield RMSC and similar footprints, which is more or less becoming the de facto standard for micro-compact pistols now. 
It comes with Springfield's Hex Wasp, and if you don't like it, you can easily just get one you prefer. That logically leads then to the next question, which is, how is the Hex Wasp, and should I replace it? After all, the Wasp has a $300 MSRP, so that's the main reason for the price jump from the Hellcat Standard to the RDP. The construction of the Wasp actually seems pretty robust. It's machined from 6061 aluminum. I really like the profile because it's low profile and it doesn't eat up a lot of real estate, but it's still somehow pretty easy to find. And that's one of the major drawbacks with small micro compact red dot optics. They're hard to find when you raise them up to your eye. It's IPX7 waterproof rated and it has a two year runtime or 65,000 hours of constant on. It's an always on model, that is the dot never goes off. It's got daylight auto adjustment and a 3.5 MOA reticle with a glass lens. There are arguments to be made for glass or plastic, but glass is certainly clearer and it seems to be the industry preferred medium at this time. So, I don't want to like the Springfield Hellcat RDP, RDPDR, DRP, um, but I can't help myself. This was rapid fire seven yards. I mean, rapid fire, you guys just saw. Um, and it, if anything, this should be right here. The only reason it's not is because I didn't adjust for the offset. It came zeroed from the factory. We were spot on at, Caleb, what, what's this distance? Okay, all right. So yeah, I was zeroed for about like, it seemed around 30, 35 feet. So like call it 10 yards, it seemed like it was zeroed 10 yards from the factory. And it is spot on at around 10 yards. Um, here, of course, it's a little bit lower. Um, so if you pay attention to your offset, you'll be all on the X-ray. Uh, really impressive, actually. The Wasp features an integral sight channel for co-witnessing with the raw dogs night sights. It also has a lifetime warranty. So this is all really good stuff we're hearing about the Wasp so far. Now for the not as good stuff. The Hex Wasp worked well enough. In fact, it worked very well. But myself and anyone who I would let shoot it indoors, and probably you, would all notice what people referred to as sparkling. You look through it and it looks like it's, it's sparkling or twinkling. The dot, uh, I don't know, for me the dot just seems to, I mean a tad bit, I don't want to say fuzzy, but it's almost like it's vibrating. It's the refresh rate. Okay, yeah, okay. That's because the refresh rate on the laser is slow, which gives it the appearance of having like a twinkling effect. But that twinkling effect goes away whenever you're outside. So I think the Wasp, like it auto detects the brightness, it cranks up the brightness on the laser, and then there's no more twinkling effect. It's like it, uh, it ups the refresh rate almost. And the brightness was decent out of the box. Uh, it, my preference would for it to be a little bit brighter, but unfortunately there's no way that I could find, at least in the owner's manual or just by looking at it, to adjust the brightness at all. You're stuck with whatever the Wasp thinks you deserve. So one thing that was kind of tricky, it works well enough inside, works well enough outside, but if you're standing inside of a shady place and you're pointing the gun, like say outside, you're under a covered structure, you're pointing it outside at something brighter, then it might wash out a little bit and there's nothing you can do about it. I guess what I'm trying to say is the Wasp is just good enough that if I got it in a package already mounted, already zeroed, already ready to go with the RDP, and it's got this durable construction, it's got this decent battery life, I'd probably just stick with it. Although it wouldn't necessarily be my first choice if I was picking my optic. So moving on to the next most obvious main feature, the Raw Dog is like a mini roll-in special in that it also comes with a compensator. It's got a little muzzle brake here. The first thing I thought was who the hell needs a compensator for a micro compact 9mm. I was like, this has to be a gimmick. Couple that with the additional weight, the additional length, the additional cost, and the fact that I don't want hot metal shards spewing out of my carry gun and into my face if I'm firing a gun in a confined space, like say inside of a vehicle or like I'm pointing it cross body, like I'm sitting inside of a vehicle. And I was like, all right, muzzle brake, hard pass for me. But we fired the raw dog. 
with and without a break. And wow. Pretty, pretty decent. Um, I, I don't know if I'd rock the comp, but I mean, for this, again, same thing, form factor as compared to the Ruger 365, 40, I mean, you know, and there's no grip zone, so it took me a while to figure it out. <laughs> false because I think once in like 2015 or something I was wrong but I initially said I would probably not run it without the comp but now having just shot it without the comp I did feel I mean I can notice the difference in the recall impulse as I perceived it without the comp so it actually does work and pretty damn well at that in fact Brandon was pretty impressed with it okay yeah I run the comp <laughs> <laughs> how does the brake get on there well this barrel's threaded half by 28, so that means you get a factory threaded barrel with the raw dog in the most common thread pitch for 9mm silencers, which is a huge plus. So you can take the brake off, pop a silencer on here if you want to. You can use the RDP with or without the brake, of course. The brake's actually a brilliant little piece of gear in and of itself, and I bet Springfield could probably make a killing selling just the barrel and brakes for micro compacts. It not only works, but it's also self-indexing, meaning that you basically just use this little lever here on the bottom. You press that lever in, you twist it off, and then you press the lever back in when you twist it back on, and it'll automatically snap into a little recess here on the bottom side of the barrel. And it's always going to be properly timed or properly indexed. No shims required, no guesswork. And this brake's not really heavy at all as it's made out of anodized aluminum. While that might give you pause, you might say, why wouldn't I want something more durable like steel? Actually, I think anodized machined aluminum can stand up to this task. After all, aluminum baffles and tubes are common in even high-end 9mm dedicated cans. It also makes the gun lightweight, and as we know, the barrel length is typically the easiest dimension to conceal if you're carrying on your body. So the additional length and the additional weight of the brakes not really a bother at all. So how much more does the Raw Dog weigh than the standard Hellcat? Only an ounce. That's with the brake installed, with the optic, only an ounce heavier than the standard Hellcat. The RDP with a brake and optic is just 19.1 ounces, which is half an ounce heavier than a plain Jane P365 and a full ounce lighter than the standard Shield Plus. And it holds one more round in a flush fit magazine than either of those guns, which is pretty impressive. The RDP also has a good trigger. The Raw Dog features the new Gen 2 trigger. This is the newest Hellcat trigger, and it's only on the RDP at the time of publication, weighing in at about 5.5 to 6 pounds. While I do prefer the lighter 4.5 pound trigger on the brand new Shield Plus, most people are going to want at least a 5.5 pound trigger like this on a concealed carry gun to reduce the chance of a negligent discharge. Relatedly, the RDP comes with or without a thumb safety if you want one. So, is the Raw Dog a good gun? Would I buy it? Those are two different questions with two different answers. Yes, in my opinion, this is a good gun. Even with the muzzle brake and an optic included, this gun's still in the same weight class as its competition without those accessories, and it also holds an additional round over its competitors. The brake works, it shoots well for a micro compact, and honestly, at this point, the Max 9, the Sig P365, the Shield Plus, and the Hellcat will likely all have a comparable shooting performance for you. And I would consider all of their triggers to be comparable and pretty decent in the same general class. Plus, the trigger weights are all within like a pound of each other. The threaded barrel is nice, especially if you plan on using a suppressor, and the muzzle brake is actually very functional, believe it or not. As I said, the Hex Wasp is good enough, and I guess if you don't want to make a large standalone optic investment, or install it, or zero it yourself, you may as well just get it with this combo and save yourself a few dollars. This falls under the, I don't think I would buy it necessarily, but I don't think that you shouldn't buy it category. For me, not having adjustable brightness is a bit of a deal breaker, but it works well enough. If I were hell bound on the Hellcat, I'd probably skip the Raw Dog and buy the Hellcat OSP. It's only a $30 upcharge from the standard model Hellcat, and then you can go pick up a Shield RMSC or a Holosun 507K instead of getting the Hex Wasp. 
And, you know, I don't really need the threaded barrel or brake because I'm probably not going to suppress a micro compact 9. And while the brake's great to shoot, it really is. I do worry about brakes and comps on small CCW dedicated guns for the reasons I mentioned earlier in the video and in the SIG P365 SAS review. But that's just what I would do. I'm not telling you how to live your life. If you want a plug and play optimized handgun that's out of the box, ready to go, pre-zeroed, lightweight, with a tough micro red dot that shoots pretty flat on account of the muzzle brake, as well as the second gen trigger, as they're calling it, then you may want to check out the Hellcat. Regardless of your opinion of the feature set on the RDP, we can at least commend Springfield for their creativity and for setting themselves apart from the rest of the market by looking at things that you wouldn't normally consider adding to a micro compact and getting it to work well. These are features that you usually only see on super high-end custom handguns and so-called roll-in specials. So I gotta say I am pretty impressed with Springfield's willingness to think outside the box and to do a pretty good job of it. Speaking of impressed, did you watch this whole video? God, I love you. Thank you so much, guys, for watching TFV TV. Thank you to our sponsors, Blue Alpha. We give away three $100 Blue Alpha gift certificates every month on TFB TV Mailroom. So check out Mailroom. Those go to only Patreon and Subscribestar supporters. So if you're at any contribution level that is $1, $2, $5, $10, you're automatically entered to win one of three Blue Alpha Gear gift certificates for $100 every month. We also give away four guns a month from Top Gun Supply, or if you don't want any of the guns, you can win a $350 Top Gun Supply gift certificate. Thanks again for watching, guys. Take care. We'll be bringing you more TFB TV.